Merry Christmas, everyone, and welcome to our second annual Christmas video devotionals. I am Pastor Jim DeVore, the pastor of Cornerstone Church in Little Rock, California. So glad you've joined us on our website to uh, take advantage of these Christmas devotionals. It'll be running now until Christmas Day themselves. But let me first just say thank you to Ray and Lola Monk for their Christmas gift of last year, which is our backdrop for today. We thank you so much for that and just really love that. We'll be sharing that uh, all season long. That's going to be our backdrop as we begin each and every one of our devotions. Well, last year, these devotions started as a uh, as an answer to the pandemic, to the shutdown, an opportunity to kind of celebrate the Christmas season in our cloistered little homes. And, and uh, it went across so well that I just really am excited to bring them back to you again today. And so that is exactly what we're doing as we return now to our Christmas video devotionals. And so thank you for joining us. Let me tell you exactly how they're going to work. Um, we have four aspects to these video devotionals. One is the uh, sharing of the pictures that people have actually given to us here um, during out the last couple of weeks um, from the church itself. So I want to be able to actually begin by sharing those with you right now. And um, these are just great opportunities for people to kind of let us know what their house and their homes look like. And so that's what we're doing here. This picture actually is from the Mortimer family. And that's actually a window painting that their daughter did. And I like this one so much that this is also going to be fairly regular. I'll be using it um, in other aspects of our devotional presentation throughout the season. Now, so we're not only will we be sharing um, some of those. So let me just show you as we go here so you can get a quick look at these. These are also from the Mortimer family. There's Dennis and Deborah and Sophie, and they're at the Hollywood Christmas Parade. And I love this one in the corner. Uh, where the cameraman is behind them waving and kind of photobombing the picture. I thought that was great. And then this is just a shot of the of the band um, where the band was set up for the Christmas parade itself. Okay, so that's the one aspect of our Christmas devotions. The other aspect is going to be the sharing of Psalm 84, because Christmas Advent season is a reflection on the longing for the arrival of the Messiah, who came as Jesus Christ back in the first century. And so as we, in a sense, rehearse that, relive that, renew that, and celebrate the arrival of the Messiah who's already come, it also should create in us a longing within ourselves as well to um, look forward to the return of Christ. And so Psalm 84 is just a great psalm to help us do that. And so we're going to be going through Psalm 84, um, verse by verse, between now and Christmas Day, to kind of get us in the focus of longing. OK, and now the other aspect of this is going to be and this is the Christmas gift that you're going to be able to give to the Lord Jesus Christ. And that is I'm going to encourage you to memorize the 12 verses of Psalm 84. And then on Christmas Day, share that with the Lord Jesus Christ and with friends around you. Now, don't panic if you're thinking, oh, no, I'm too old to memorize or I don't have enough time or whatever. Um, all of those are are not true. And I want to encourage you specifically to say, I'm, I'm going to give it my best shot. And whether you end up with three verses or six verses or all 12 verses, I want to encourage you to be ready to memorize and at least give a try as a gift to the Lord Jesus Christ on Christmas Day. And then the very last thing we're going to do, at least today, though sometimes I'll mix these up in order when we do the actual devotional, is I'm going to share with you a story um, that I wrote several years ago. Our church actually used it as a reader's theater several years ago as well. And it's basically a modern adaption of Luke 15, and it's called When God Ran. Okay, so let's dive into those. Let me back us up here, and let's begin with just a simple reading of Psalm 84 today. And then beginning tomorrow, we'll kind of take it apart verse by verse and, and allow it to help us to long for the return of Christ and to be in the presence of God. Psalm 84. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts. My soul longs, yes, faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and flesh sing for joy to the living God. Even the sparrow finds a home and a swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young at your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Blessed are those who dwell in your house, ever singing your praise, Selah. Blessed are those whose strength is in you and whose heart are the highways to Zion. As they go through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs, and the early rains cover it with pools. They go from strength to strength. Each one appears before God in Zion. O Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob, Selah. Behold our shield, O God. Look on the face of your anointed. 
For a day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of wickedness. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good things does he withhold from those who walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the one who trusts in you. There you have it, Psalm 84, verses 1 through 12. Now, let's begin your gift that you're going to prepare for the Lord Jesus Christ on Christmas Day. Maybe you're going to memorize in the traditional fashion. Start with verse 1, you get that down, add on verse 2, add on verse 3, see how far you get. Let me also suggest a method that I use that my wife taught me years ago when I wanted to begin memorizing large blocks of scripture. And that's beginning at the last part of the verse, the last verse in the block, and working your way backwards up. So in other words, you'd begin with verse 12, and then tomorrow you'll go to verse 11 to verse 12. Let me tell you why I like this method so much. I like this method because when I memorize the last verse, then that is the one I know the best. And then the next day I memorize verse 11 in this case. But when I get to verse 12, that's the old verse that I've already memorized. So the new material, which is harder for me to memorize at first, is the first thing I work on. And then I start going through the material that I've already memorized. And that's easier as I go. So literally, if I do it backwards, then the farther into my memorization, the easier it is for me because I've already memorized those verses and gone over them so many times. It's up to you, but let me help you get started. Perhaps you're going to go the traditional route. So here we go. You're going to pick Psalm 84, 1. I'm going to read. You read with me, and then you're going to say it with your eyes closed along with me. You're allowed to peek. Just notice that my eyes will be closed at that moment, too. First, eyes open. I'm reading. You're listening. Psalm 84, 1. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts. Okay, now it is your turn to join me. Ready, begin. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts. All right, let's close those eyes. Here we go. Ready, begin. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts. That wasn't too bad, was it? Well, if it was, you can always pause and rewind a bit and go through it again. Here we go. Psalm 84, 12, for those of you doing the backwards method. I'll read it first. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the one who trusts in you. Okay, together, ready, begin. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the one who trusts in you. All right, let's try it with our eyes closed. Ready, begin. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the one who trusts in you. Then open your eyes. There you go. You've begun your gift to the Lord Jesus. Work on that today. Maybe go to the, go get a copy of the scriptures and print them out and carry them around with you. Tomorrow we'll pick up your next verse. All right, on with the next part of our devotion. As I said, this is a reader's theater adaption of Luke 15, 11 through 24. Well, I don't have a handful of readers here. You just have me. So I'm going to play all the parts here as we go along through this special adaption of when God ran. It's a look at Luke 15, 11 through 24 in a modern version. So let me share that passage with you, and we will um, then take a look at the first part of the theater reading today. Verse 11, this is Jesus sharing the parable. And he said, there was a man who had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, father, give me the share of property that is coming to me, and he divided his property between them. Not many days later, the younger son gathered all he had and took a journey into a far country. And there he squandered his property in reckless living. And when he had spent everything, a severe famine arose in that country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him into the fields to feed pigs. And he was longing to be fed with the pods that the pigs are, that the pigs are eating, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to his self, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have more than enough bread, but I perish here with hunger. I will arise and go to my father and I will say to him, father, I sinned against you and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me as one of your hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and felt compassion and ran and embraced him and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. 
But the father said to his servants, bring quickly the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet and bring the fattened calf and kill it. And let us eat and celebrate. For this is my son who is dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found and they began to celebrate. All right, as we begin the first part of our Reader's Theater, we're gonna be taking a look at these verses. So let me read them again, and then I will move in to the actual Reader's Theater. And he said, there was a man who had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, give me the share of property that is coming to me. He divided his property between them. Not many days later, the younger son gathered all he had and took a journey into a far country. And there he squandered his property in reckless living. All right, let me present to you the Reader's Theater, in this case, read by only one, entitled, When God Ran. Skip stepped off the plane and was met by a brisk December wind. Brrr, it's colder in Boston than in Dallas. Instinctively, he tucked his head and buttoned his overcoat to the top. Let's see now, said Skip thinking, baggage claim, food, he began reading the options before him on the sign, giving him various directions and places to go. Restrooms, rental cars, that's it, rental cars. Lower level, great, I'll get the baggage after the car. Skip began to ponder his task ahead, thinking to himself, I'll get the rental car first, the baggage, find a hotel room and then, and then find dad. What will I do if I actually find him? What if four years hasn't been long enough for him to cool off? Come on, Skip, that's ridiculous. This is your father. <laughs> yeah, that's why I'm worried. It is my father, the man who can hold a grudge longer than Lady Liberty does the torch. Happy holidays. Uh, welcome to Herschel rent cars Merry Christmas. A welcome. Excuse me. May, may I help you, sir? Oh said Skip, snapping out of his own thoughts. Ah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry about that. How may I help you, sir? Well, do you have any small compact cars available? Well, yes, sir, of course. We have several models available. How long will you need it, sir? Well, that'll be up to my dad. Skip picked up his rental car, drove to the motel where he had booked a room just in case things didn't go too well at home. There you go, just wetting your whistle for the story of when God ran. Thank you so much for joining me today for our first video devotional of 2022 for the, I'm sorry, 2021 for the holiday season. And I'm excited to join you again tomorrow as we continue our Christmas devotionals 2021. And God bless you and thanks again for joining us.